so hello friends now let's uh, move to the next part of our discussion in our previous video we have discussed about grave stages now in this video we are going to discuss about diffusion multinodular goiters okay so let's begin our discussion and if you are first time at this channel please subscribe us please 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 address request please subscribe us now coming to the topic that is diffuse and multinodular goiter dmg diffuse multinodular goiter so first we will define so what is goiter so goiter is basically enlargement of thyroid without hyperthyroidism so this is the basic definition okay enlargement of thyroid gland without hyperthyroidism clear now first come to the diffuse non toxic goiter okay diffuse non toxic type of goiter so this diffuse non toxic type of goiter is basically characterized by enlargement of thyroid gland without that's very important without any nodularity okay there will be no nodularity so enlargement of thyroid gland will be there but without any nodularity so this is known as diffuse non toxic goiter clear so coming to the etiology etiology of this so this is of two types basically that will be one is endemic and the second one will be sporadic okay so endemic and sporadic so first coming to the endemic clear so first coming to the endemic first now the term endemic is used when goiters are present in more than your 10% of population in a given region then we will use the term endemic and the most common cause is deficiency of iodine iodine is the most most common cause of deficiency of iodine iodine or there may be intake of certain goitrogens so these are the two most important cause either decrease iodine level or taking goitrogens basically what are the goitrogens so these are the substances okay ingestion of which interfere with your thyroid hormone synthesis so these substances are known as goitrogens such as your brassicaceae family mem okay members of brassicaceae family or your cassava root so these are the two important okay cassava root and brassicaceae family member so this cassava root basically consists of a thiocyanate compound okay this thiocyanate and this will inhibit iodine transportation within the thyroid clear now coming to uh, pathogenesis in how this goiter develops so look there will be two things okay either there will be deficiency of iodine or there will be intake of goitrogens clear these two will lead to decrease synthesis of thyroid hormone and this decrease synthesis of thyroid hormone basically lead to in compensatory increase serum tsh and due to increase tsh there will be hypertrophy and hyperplasia of thyroid follicle so there will be hypertrophy and hyperplasia of thyroid follicle due to increase tsh there will be hypertrophy and hyperplasia of thyroid follicle and that will lead to compensatory enlargement of gland and due to this hypertrophy and hyperplasia there will be enlargement of gland now two thing happens remember this look this this enlargement of gland will lead to increased production of thyroid hormone okay and that will overcome the hormone deficiency and that will be known as u thyroid metabolic state okay u thyroid metabolic state the second what are the structural changes so there will be that in enlargement of gland will lead to diffuse non toxic goiter or sometimes it is also known as a simple goiter you can say it diffuse non toxic goiter or sometimes it also known as simple goiter clear and suppose if there is recurrent episodes of hyperplasia and involution if suppose there is recurrent episodes of this hyperplasia and hypertrophy then that will lead to multinodular goiter okay that will lead to multinodular goiter so if the question comes write the pathogenesis of multinodular goiter so same thing you have to write okay same thing if you have to write diffuse non toxic goiter same thing you have to write we are discussing here diffuse non toxic we are not discussing multinodular but the pathogenesis is same okay now moving to the next part so coming to the next so this is the basic pathogenesis okay now we will come to a sporadic goiter this was endemic now coming to the sporadic goiter so it is less frequent basically okay in, in compared to endemic goiter it is less frequent and basically it occurs at puberty or in young adult life and it has female predominance 
and causes what are the causes of uh, this sporadic goiter we are discussing sporadic goiter so what are the causes of sporadic goiter so the first cause is hereditary enzymatic defect okay there is certain hereditary enzymatic defect will be there or there will be ingestion of certain substances which interfere with thyroid hormone synthesis means goitrogens basically or there may be unknown causes clear now coming to the morphology of this so what are the basic morphology so it it is uh, basically this diffuse non toxic water we are talking about the diffuse non toxic water so it has two phases the first phase is known as hyperplastic phase the first phase is hyperplastic phase and the second one is known as phase of colloid involution okay the second phase is phase of colloid involution so these are the two phases so first coming to the hyperplastic phase so what we will see in microscopy so in hyperplastic phase there will be hyperplasia of lining epithelium of thyroid follicles clear and the second colloid content uh, is uh, variable in throughout the gland okay some follicles are basically descended with huge amount of colloid where some will have minimum amount of colloid so this is known as hyperplastic phase then phase of colloid involution so suppose if the dietary content of the iodine increases or if the demand for your thyroid hormone decreases then the stimulated hyperplastic phase the stimulated hyperplastic phase goes in the phase of colloid involution okay and in this microscopy what you will find you will find flattened follicular epithelial lining okay flattened follicular epithelial line so these are the two morphology which you get in this diffuse non toxic water clear now coming to the multi nodular goiter so the pathogen is same that in long standing simple goiter recurrent recurrent episodes of hyoplasia and involution combine to produce irregular enlargement of thyroid that is known as multi nodular goiter so it is just the irregular enlargement of thyroid gland it is irregular enlargement of thyroid gland clear now coming to the morphology of this pathogen is same which we have discussed coming to morphology so morphology on gross what you see you will get multiple nodules okay that is asymmetrically enlarged basically and when we talk about the pattern of enlargement then one lobe of thyroid may be more involved in compared to other or one nodule may become so prominent that it appears as a solitary nodule clear okay? and sometimes this goiter may go behind the sternum and clavicle clear okay? and next finding weight of thyroid it will all increase okay? coming to the microscopy so in microscopy you will get nodules you will get colloidal cyst okay this is basically formed by fusion of large colloid containing follicles this colloidal cyst then you will also get follicular hyperplasia clear you when we talk about stroma then you will get fibrosis fibrosis and dystrophic calcification this is very important, very important dystrophic calcification this is, it is asking in your pg examination okay dystrophic calcification so you will get dystrophic calcification here clear so this is the basic pathogenesis and this is the morphology when we come to the clinical features so let's discuss about the clinical features what are the clinical feature you are going to get here so it is usually asymptomatic and it is usually present as mass in neck clear now large multi nodal goiter may can cause a compression of surrounding structure such as it may lead to airway obstruction due to compression of trachea or it may lead to dysphagia due to compression of your esophagus there may be venous congestion of the head and face there may be hoarseness of voice clear yeah. so there is a finding air obstruction dysphagia venous congestion hoarseness of voice clear and fnc is helpful for diagnosis you know so this is all about your uh, thyroid pathology we have discussed in basically in four videos this was the fourth video and we have discussed all important topics in the thyroid so thank you for watching please subscribe and support us bye